You're listening to Drive on BBC Somerset. Now, a Somerset woman who claims to be allergic to many of the things that most of us associate with modern life is still refusing to leave the wooden buildings where she's lived for more than 12 years. Gillian McCarthy doesn't have planning permission for her home in a field near Wincanton, and the local council gave her until today to move to a mobile home nearby. Well, we can speak now to South Somerset District Council's deputy leader, Rick Pallister, and Gordon McHendry. He's the founder of NCS International, an organisation which supports people suffering from multiple chemical sensitivity and has backed Gillian McCarthy. So if we can go first through to a councillor, Rick Pallister. Rick, good evening to you. Now, you've been working on Gillian's case for a number of years. Why does she have to move? I've been personally involved in Gillian's case for over 10 years now. She has to move because, quite simply, she does not have planning permission to remain where she is at the moment. Um, you can't set up uh, a camp in a field um, of your choosing and live there without planning permission, and I'm afraid Gillian can't either. The problem is that if there were extenuating circumstances, which Gillian believes there are, then those should have been put forward through a planning application, and they never have been. So your council, along with social services and the NHS, have come up with the solution of a mobile home near to where she lives at the moment. Why is Gillian refusing that? We need to be clear, first of all, the council has no duty to house Gillian. The uh, duty to house her was discharged back in around, I think, the year 2000. That was subjected to an ombudsman inquiry, and the ombudsman upheld the decision that had been reached by the council. Uh, Gillian has never accepted the ombudsman's ruling on that. So the offer of the mobile home is merely that. It is an offer because we've tried to do our best to meet Gillian's needs, but there is a fundamental and underlying problem, and that is that no one from the primary care trust has ever been able to examine Gillian, certainly since, I think, the mid-90s. So we have no up-to-date assessment of Gillian's needs. And in many ways, it would be rather as if you walked into the, your doctor's, uh, told the doctor what was wrong with you, said you refused to be examined, and demanded uh, prescription drugs, or walking into a housing department and saying, I can't live in a normal house, I'm not prepared to give you medical evidence from a primary care trust doctor that will support me living in, say, a stone house with glass walls um, and a Faraday cage surrounding it. We've never been given the evidence from somebody recognised by the primary care trust uh, as medically qualified to give us any assistance in that respect. Is there any chance that could happen? I doubt it, to be honest. This has been going on now, certainly, as I say, I've been involved for over 10 years, and I genuinely thought, when I took over as the chairman of the multi-agency group, because there are three parties to this, social services, the primary care trust, and, and the housing department within South Somerset, we've always worked together to try and find the solutions to Gillian's many problems that go well beyond the housing. Unfortunately, we've never, ever found a solution acceptable to Jill and each time it comes back to her refusal to be medically examined. We've even offered that she can select any person of her choosing who is medically qualified and recognised by the Primary Care Trust and they can put anyone of their choosing in to do a joint medical needs assessment. Without that, it's difficult to know where we can start because at the moment Gillian is self-certifying. She is saying that she knows what's wrong with her and that she won't be examined by anyone else to determine the extent, because we're not suggesting for one moment that Gillian is not suffering from MCS or some form of it. It's to what extent mm. and, and what is needed to overcome that. Gillian says, I know what's needed, but she's not allowing anyone else to assess her from the primary care trust, and I must stress that. She's brought other people in, but none of them are medically qualified in a way that has enabled us to do that joint assessment, okay. i.e. a doctor from each side. All right, Rick, thanks very much. Let's go through to Gordon McHendry. He's the founder of MCS International, which is an organisation which supports uh, people suffering from multiple chemical sensitivity. Gordon, good evening to you. So remind us about this condition, MCS. 
Well, it's a, it's a, it's a very difficult uh, illness. Uh, it's fallen between all the stools in the medical profession uh, currently, although there's a lot of fantastic research going on around the planet, and uh, some countries now are actually accepting it as a real physical illness. So there's a lot of progress going you know, on there. I would just like to come back to some of the points that uh, the councillor was making there, that, uh, that over the, all these years that they're claiming to have done their best. You know, I mean, I think anyone that's been and actually had a look at their living conditions of Gillian McCarthy, you would find that utterly laughable. Although it sounds like the council and other authorities have been very reasonable. I mean, you know... Well, it, it depends, you know, on, on how you look at that. I mean, I know quite clearly that if Gillian uh, was uh, a domestic pet or a farm animal, you know, some kind, you know, that the animal rescue people organisations would have been kicking their door down to, uh, to rescue her a long time ago. You know, I think it's absolutely scandalous that she's still there. You know, the council mayor makes the point that uh, Gillian is refusing to move. You know, that's not really true. Gillian would love to move, you know, if she had somewhere suitable to move to. What about the idea that Gillian won't have this medical examination? It sounds as if she would. Things could move in a different direction. Yes, well, this is, this is another bone of contention. I mean, Gillian herself would be the first to claim that uh, she would be quite happy to have these medical assessments if they were carried out properly. I mean, you just cannot send along some doctor or medical profession picked by the council to uh, examine someone who suffers from multiple chemical sensitivity but as severely as Gillian does. You know, coming along with wearing aftershaves or perfumes or having laundered the clothes and detergents that are going to make Gillian very ill. Did I hear wrong then? Wasn't there an idea that possibly Gillian could put somebody forward? Well, she has done various points. I mean, she said she said numerous tests done. I believe she said DNA tests. She said all sorts of you know biological tests done that she's funded privately and sent the papers repeatedly to the council, who, it's, it's my understanding, have repeatedly lost such things. Gordon, what would you like to see happen here? I would like to see, first of all, the uh, all attempts to evict Gillian to be withdrawn until the case is looked at again, you know, in a comprehensive way involving people who have real expertise with the multiple chemical sensitivity illness, you know, people perhaps like Professor Malcolm Hooper of Sunderland University, uh, which uh, you know, I, I, I wish that you, you, you had, you know, someone like that on your show just now, you know, who could put the case for multiple ke chemical sensitivity uh, much better than I can. Uh, or Dr. Anne McIntyre, for example. Okay, let's you know, These kind of people. All right, Gordon, let me go straight back to Rick, uh, Rick Pallister. Rick, these names, uh, is this something that you've looked at? Would you, would you put one of these people? Yeah, I need to, we need to be crystal clear. It isn't the council engaging medical people, it is the primary care trust. The council does not involve itself in medical things. We are completely guided by the primary care trust. There have been many names put forward, many experts from across the UK. No one is suggesting that we're just going to have any old doctor brought in. The Primary Care Trust has been working exhaustively on this for 15 years. Just on housing alone, there are 14 box files. We've actually acquired land, got planning permission, and we've still failed. We haven't given up on Gillian, and we're not giving up. But unless and until Gillian comes to accept the fact that she has to be examined, not by somebody entirely of her choosing, but jointly, to be able to, for her to turn around and say, I will not accept that person put forward by the PCT, when actually what we're suggesting is that two medically qualified doctors will undertake that examination and jointly they will give us the recommendations. Rick, do you think some people might be listening to this thinking, well, actually, perhaps you should have given this up a while ago in terms of the money that it's also costing taxpayers? Yeah, you could actually say that, and I think there will be many people out there absolutely justified. This has cost over £100,000, well over. Never mind the thousands of manor houses involved from all three agencies. Just two doctors out there this morning, an expert brought down from North Yorkshire this morning. You know, we could actually be accused of wasting public money on this, but the reality comes back to the fact that she's sitting there without planning permission. You can't do it, I can't do it. Okay. And the planning committee have taken it to the High Court, and the High Court has looked at the evidence put forward by Gillian's side and has upheld the decision that she must leave. All right, we'll have to leave it there. Councillor Rick Pallister and Gordon McKendry, thanks for, to both of you for your time.